Hi guys, how's it going? It's me, Alexei Nowitzki, or Lucius, and today I thought I would explain um, when it comes to my theory on how UFOs can create time dilations, meaning people that experience UFOs have loss of time or they have gain time relative to people that are not experiencing the UFOs. So the first thing to note is that every single Planck voxel within our dimension can be considered the center of a black hole. Um, energy is constantly spiraling inward through a toroidal shape, creating different harmonics and different frequencies. This photo comes from Randall Carlson on the Concrete podcast, um, giving us the periodic table of elements. But another way to look at this is you can consider the vortex of infinity that has all the different harmonics. And again, this is from every single Planck voxel. Every little, the tiniest pixel you can imagine has this same vortex action and they all overlap to give us a physical experience. And so if you come out here, you could say this is the habitable spiral of perception where matter and light can exist. And each one of our conscious harmonics, delta, theta, alpha, beta, slow gamma, fast gamma, is tuned to very specific layers and so here you can see the layering of energetic states that exist within every single Planck voxel right that gives us our awareness and so you could say that here's another example of that but so there's also inner dimensions and outer dimensions so let's go over to the table of universes so human consciousness basically goes from delta to fast gamma and these are harmonics of experience and awareness for a human body after fast gamma we have um, omega waves zeta waves epsilon omicron iota i did name all those and i named the uh, noviverse as well as well as the lower verse which are frequencies slower than our delta wave so we have this thing called the future, and we also have something called the past. So as our entire dimensional layer exists within a state of rotation, we are moving towards the future and away from the past. So it gives us essentially four different states of matter. So in this drawing, you could say that the future is downward, that this is the center of the time, and this is our dimensional layer orbiting, you could say that you get four states. You get future denser, future less dense, past less dense, and past more dense, right? So matter gets crunched to us, light stretched away, and then it all reverts back to normal. You have to think outward and inward motions of energetic states, which ultimately gives us something like this from every single point of our perception. The future being crunched to us, stretched away, the past being crunched to us and stretched inward. Because the flow of space-time at the smooth cosmic microwave background is where it's an expanded state and that's the past. And so light, it's, it's where light, what's the best way to put this? Um, that is a flow of space-time equal to the speed of light going outward is the smooth cosmic microwave background. The center of black holes is the flow of space of time going inward. And that's the limitation to human perception. One time the speed of light outward and one time the speed of light inward. So from here, you can see this would be the inward direction. This would be the outward direction. And we have an overlapping of one half past, one half future, stretching and crunching our perceptions into existence. So as our entire dimensional layer rotates to the left, because everything is in a state of rotation, our perceptions are crunched and stretched into existence. And so we can look at the perceivable fields of information that that align with the human body which are shown in the table of universes which gives us this so 
So that's our, our theta wave turning on. And this is from every single Planck voxel as described by this drawing, which also relates to the vortex of infinity, the vortex of tidally locked fluids. And so at every single energetic distance of awareness, this is the table of universes coming out, you have perceivable fields of information that are being crunched and stretched into existence. And so when it comes to us perceiving stuff of a denser realm, see if I can get us a good shot here, you can see that inward experiences are being crunched to us. Let's see if I have one more there. There we go. Now, and then we also have outward experiences being crunched and stretched to us. Giving us ultimately a wall of perception which gives us an experience a smiley face so now how when you're thinking through all these different dimensional layers you can see that there's walls of perception at every single one of these harmonic resonances that harmonize with the human body based off the table of perceivable universes for human awareness. And so in order to perceive a denser vibration, you need to do something called create an expanded light state. So you're literally expanding the space time, right? And so what, what does that do to our perception of time? And so that's where we can go to this drawing right here and so we live in the universe and you could say we're orbiting to the left so the future is on the left the past is on the right inward dimensions have higher frequencies and outward dimensions have slower frequencies so now when a uap comes from a denser vibration it needs to essentially harmonize the two layers. That's quite literally the concept behind the interdimensional telescope. It creates expanded and or compressed states of space-time as well as a torsion force, allowing the dimensions to harmonize to each other. So essentially, if you wanted to perceive the alleyverse, in a beta state, you would need to use this factor here. So 40,000 divided by 625 is the crunching factor, and the rotation factor would be related to the 20 and the 160, right? So you would need to slow down the, the rates of rotation by eight times in order to properly perceive the alleyverse when in a beta state. And so now how does that translate into time dilations and perception of matter? Well, imagine we live in the universe right here, as shown by that green shell, and a being of a denser realm harmonizes to our dimension. So that's what's indicated here. This is a vortex that starts from a point within the Noviverse and stretches outward, harmonizing to our universe. So what does that do? That essentially warps space-time in order to bring the blue layer out into the green layer. So what does that do to our perception while existing within this vortex? Well, it's essentially pushing our green layer out into this red layer. And so a 20 hertz wave would become a 0.625 hertz wave. And so that you could say would be the time dilation that you would experience while in the presence of a UFO coming from a denser vibration. Because our awareness is related to, our perception of time is related to the shifts in frequency. So blue comes into the green, that pushes green into the red. 
640 hertz has now harmonized to 20 hertz so now they can perceive our dimension but however we are being pushed out into somewhat of the dreamland or of a of less time so in essence in short when a denser being comes into our dimension we experience loss of time because we get less waves per second as opposed to this dimensional layer where they're still getting the normal amount of waves. Likewise, if you have a being coming in from a less dense realm and harmonizing with our dimension, you would experience more time. So here is the dimension of the lower verse. Now, it's a bigger vortex being focused to a point, harmonizing the lower verse realms to our universal realm. And so what does that do? Well, it creates the opposite effect, ultimately, to where you can see that our green perception is now in the blue. So essentially for one second here, you would experience much more time, right? Because your perception of time is related to which shell you're inhabiting. So if a less dense being comes into our dimension, you experience more time. So someone out here might experience one minute. Meanwhile, inside you're experiencing a few hours kind of thing. Um, so it's just a really easy way to think about it and a really easy way to understand. So in short, every single Planck voxel can be seen as the center of a black hole. So every single infin infinitely small point within our dimensional layer can be seen as the center of a black hole and emerging from a tidally locked vortex of infinity. We are perceiving one half past, one half future as energetic relationships and our sense of time is related to which habitable zone we're actually existing within. I need to turn off those, not that one. Um, so these are all habitable zones of experience. Information fields, information matrices. And based off the maximum conscious harmonic of the human mind is what layer you're ultimately tuned to. And so when it comes to thought forms, well, they start from the outer regions and drift inwards. And so basically the pacing motions of our lives are somewhat controlled by the thoughts, the wants, don't wants, assumptions, and expectations of beings of less dense realms. But again, when it comes specifically to those time dilations and Lorenz contractions, if you have a being from a denser realm coming into our dimensional layer, they are going to warp space-time with a magnetic vortex that will relate to this um, interdimensional telescope concept of creating puffed out space or compressed space, which gives us the relative vibrations that we can perceive. And so, again, if a being is coming from a denser realm out into our realm or dimension, a denser dimension into our dimension, our perception ultimately starts to harmonize with the less dense realm. And a 20 hertz now becomes much slower. So if you were to be perceiving waves of energy, the amount of time it takes is slower. So ultimately, if a denser being comes into our dimension, you experience loss of time, as in like a gap in time, because two hours could have happened here. Meanwhile, for you up here, it was like five, 10 seconds. But other way around, being from a less dense realm harmonizes into our dimension your awareness gets pushed inwards towards a denser vibration and you experience more time. So one minute in our dimension now becomes 
about, you know, at least um, 30 minutes or something like that, 40 minutes. It depends on how, how far in from the center they're coming from and how far out from the out they're coming from. But so that's that's really the easiest way to explain why the UAP create losses of time or more time when you're experiencing them. So hopefully that made sense. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.